Welcome back and in this video we are going to have a detailed discussion about a topic in basic biomechanics known as the tensile forces or tension forces. So far we were having a detailed discussion about various topics in basic biomechanics along with our normal routine videos. So if you haven't checked those videos yet, uh, kindly check on to that video. The link to the basic biomechanics videos are given in the cards above and descriptions. So in this video, as I told you, we will focus on what are tensile forces, how to distinguish tensile forces, what are the preliminary or what are the peculiarities of the tensile forces. What are tensile forces? So tensile forces exist when there is an opposite pull on an object what is that the tensile force exists when there is an opposite pull on an object for example <clears throat> i have a wooden block over here or a concrete block in the ground this is a ground okay and i'm standing over here right like this yes and i have a rope with me which I attach to the wooden block and I try to pull the wooden block to, uh, towards me, right? I try to pull the wooden block towards me. Now, you know that this wooden block has a weight, okay? Those, due to that weight, uh, the wooden block may not fall, right? Yes. Or you uh, take it as a concrete block too. Okay. Now, you know by the Newton's law that uh, there would be another force which is exerted by the wooden block onto the rope itself. So there are two forces here. One is a force exerted by me on the wooden block and another force exerted by the wooden block back onto the rope. So both the forces act on the same object from me on the rope and from the wooden block on the rope. So what do you call that? Um, the rope is under constant tension forces. So we can say that now the rope is under constant tension forces. That is because there is pull to this direction, there is to pull to the opposite direction. So tension forces exist when there is an opposite pull on the same object. To understand that, just think on this example that I'm standing over here, but I don't have that wooden block over here or my rope is not attached to the wooden block. Okay, the block is there, but the rope is not attached to the wooden block or the rope just got untied from the wooden block. Now, what happens if I try to pull the block or the rope, what happens? The rope will come to me, right? Will there be an opposite force on the rope? No, because the block is not attached to the block rope. So, there is, at that scenario, or at this second scenario, I can say that there is no tension forces. There is no tension forces. Can you understand the scenario? Once again, for example, this is the wall in my room. I am tying a screw and applying a rod onto this wall, and I'm trying to pull it in this direction. Definitely, the wall won't move. What happens is that as long as I'm trying to pull this direction, the wall is exerting a force opposite. Now, my screw got um, uh, loose from that and when I try to pull it like this, the, screw, the rope uh, vein came out of that wall. So, at this scenario, even if the rope is there, I, as long, even if the rope is there and I try pulling it and pulling it, will there be any tension? No, because it's not applied to the wall. That is why I told you tension forces exist when there is an opposite pull on the same object. At this scenario, I am pulling the object, there is one pulling force is there. But only when that opposite pull is there, we can say that the tension force acts. So when there is no opposite pull, there is no tension force acting. Am I clear? So the scenario over here or the definition over here, tension forces exist or tensile force exist when there is an opposite pull on the same object. If you miss that key point opposite, your answer is wrong. When there is a pull on the object, it's wrong because when I'm pulling like this, 
If there is not no opposite pull from that direction, absolutely no tension is there. For example, for example, uh, there is a rope in the ground, and I'm trying to pull the rope. You might have seen that. How long, how much great force you apply, it will come to that. Even if you pull it with a small force, it will come to you. That is because. There is no opposite pull, but at the same time it is attached to a tree over there and you try to pull it. Can you do it? Uh, can you do the movement? Or can the movement be done with ease? No. Once the rope gets tight, the longer you apply the force, there is no movement in the rope force. Ultimately, what happens is that when you apply greater and greater amount of force and the tree won't move, you know that the rope may fail, it will get break. And then there is no tension force. So no need to get confused to that much. You just have to understand tensile forces or tension force exist when there is an opposite pull on the same object, underlying same object. And if there is no opposite pull, the same scenario, the rope got untied from the block. What happens is that tensile forces do not act. There is no tensile force when there is no opposite pull. So we got two points. Now, third point is that tensile Tensile forces are always applied to the same object. They are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Because you know that I am applying a force on the, I am applying a force on the rock, and the wooden block is applying a force on the rock. This would be equal and opposite to each other. Uh, how much force I am applying? The greater amount of force that the wooden block will apply. Once this comes, or uh, when I accept more and more amount of force and the rope may ultimately fail. So, in tensile forces, the tensile forces are always equal in direct, equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and applied to the same object. That is the three criterions. Do not forget that, okay? So, can you, can you just correlate from this any force system? Of course, this becomes a part of linear force system because there are two opposite forces. They are applying on the same object. So, tensile forces are part of linear force system. Once they are part of linear force system, they are collinear, coplanar and applied to the same object. All the principles or the characteristics of tensile force, linear force system, you can add on this. So this is how you can write down a three marks or a five mark question because this is a very short one. You can give an example, write down the next and next important points and correlate. Now the point is that they are a part of linear force system. When they are a part of linear force system, what happens? They are collinear, coplanar and applied to the same object. And the resultant can be found out by, the resultant can be found out by the arithmetic sum and the resultant can be found out by the arithmetic sum and something else uh, when a tensile force is applied to a homologous object for example it's a flexible or a rigid homologous object homologous means the composition is same then the tensile force is distributed throughout the long axis of that object without any difference that means when we are applying a tension force on a homologous object for example a block of a wood or a block of concrete what happens is that the tensile force that is exerted in all that direction or all part of that object is equal that means there is a uniform distribution of the tensile forces when they it is applied to a homologous object so when tensile force is applied to a homologous homologous object which is flexible or rigid the tensile forces are distributed throughout the long axis of that object without any difference so that is another important point i hope that is clear with you and now uh, there are a lot of examples of tensile forces acting on the human body can you give me an example for example when a muscle pulls on the bone for example i'm trying to flex my elbow my biceps is pulling on my bones what happens over here when biceps is pulling at the same time the bone is exerting a pullback on through the tendon that is why the tendon of that bone becomes a tensile or there is a tension force that is developed so there is a tension force that is developed during this motion there is a tensile force that is developed in the two heads of a biceps also so when a bone 
is pulled by the muscle the tensile forces are or tension forces are developed by the action of the ligaments the tensile forces are acted on by the action of the ligaments and the tendons action on by the ligaments and the tendons so in human body we have a lot of examples of a tensile forces acting for example you might have heard about tensile loading on the trabecular system of the femur right when you have studied in the hip complex the trabecular system of femur you had you had heard about the tensile trabecular system so that is trabecular system that are developed when there is a tension forces so if you want you can simply understand tension forces are two forces which act on the same object which try to stretch or pull apart that object so tension forces are two forces which are acting on the same object which tries to pull apart or tear apart or stretch that object or stretch that object that is a tension forces you would have heard about a tensile force acting in unilateral stance and bilateral stance that's all the same and you would have heard another term known as tensile loading that means uh, there is a greater amount of uh, tensile force acting on that area that is that bone or the tendon or the muscle is being pulled apart or being elongated whenever there is a pull on the same object only tension acts for example when you are flexing to the right side there is a compression force in the one side where you are being compressed or coming closer whereas in the opposite side the structures are being pulled apart so there is a tension force when you are flexing to anteriorly your trunk your trunk flexors in anterior or anterior abdominal wall flexors or your anterior longitudinal ligaments are going to be uh, compressed whereas the posterior longitudinal ligament and other associated structure is being stretched out so there is a tensile force acting so normally in human beings uh, in normal scenarios there is compression and tensile force acting in one hand in hand so let us summarize this discussion on tensile forces by understanding the key characteristics of tensile forces which is that two tensile forces exist whenever there is an opposite pull on the same object remember same object opposite pull when there is no opposite pull, there is no tensile forces tensile forces are part of linear force system therefore they are collinear coplanar and applied to same object the resultant can be found out by simply adding on the arithmetic exam give an example of this a rope being uh, uh, placed on a wall or a wooden block and we are trying to pull a pull on the rope man on the rope one force rope a uh, block on the rope two forces when two forces are applied the rope is constantly under tension if one force is rem uh, removed the rope uh, there is no tension in the rope if the two one of the forces exceeds then the rock may go for a failure usually the tensile forces are equal in magnitude opposite in direction to when you apply tension to a homologous object it is distributed throughout the body in human beings there are a lot of examples of tension force acting and a muscle is going to flex a bone or pull a bone for example in elbow flexion activity the tension forces are carried down by the tendons and ligaments and when we are going for a trunk flexion activity the opposite side structures gets elongated or they undergo tensile loading or tensile stress whereas the same side objects go for a compressive forces so that's all about the tensile forces this is a bit more confusing topic so read on this and go to the textbook find out an example and read the different scenarios of that example surely that would be easy for you and if you like the video don't forget to click the like button and kindly subscribe to our channel